We have always said that the Republicans and the President do not understand the gravity of the situation, and every time we meet with them, it is reinforced. Uh, we, want to, we want to reach an agreement for the American people, for our children and their education, for everyone and their health care, for our workers, for our economy. Uh, it's so clear uh, that, this, that we should do something, and we should do something big, and we should do it in a way that is bipartisan. We understand where we are and where they are on a whole bunch of issues. Um, I think there's a lot of issues we are close to a compromised position. Not enough money for food, not enough, nothing for housing in terms of rentals. A moratorium, that's nice, but it's not money uh, for rent. It isn't uh, n uh, not enough money for money in the pockets of the American people who really need this, who through no fault of their own are out of work. And certainly just, uh, just when they said a skinny proposal, it was anorexic. If we conclude tomorrow that there's not a compromised position on the major issues, the president has alternatives and executive orders, but as he's instructed us, his first choice is to try to get legislation that will pass the House and the Senate that he can sign that helps the American people. And that's why I could, kept asking him, why, why won't you do this? Why won't you do this? Why won't you do this? But nonetheless, we've had some exchange further exchange of, of uh, paper to be clarified to see if we can find some further common ground, but we're very far apart. The President is right to be frustrated with Congress. We've, we've been here uh, now going on two weeks, and uh, we still don't have a deal, and uh, his willingness to take action uh, through his executive powers uh, should be applauded because he's, he's uh, coming to the realization that uh, perhaps some of our, our Democrats, uh, both in the House and the Senate, uh, are not serious about compromise.